This is a standard XLR cable. This is a three conductor. There's also five conductors, but these are typically used on microphones and audio amplifiers and speakers. And they break. A lot of times it's the actual wire here, not the connectors. But we're going to check all that. But uh, I got this wire from my son. He gave me a couple of them and I already fixed one. But uh, he thinks it's this end the female end so I put a knot in it to remind myself and it probably is this end because this is the end it gets unplugged and plugged in many times so what we're going to do first is we're going to take the ends off and inspect the cable and just make sure it's not in the ends before we get going on the wire and the wire is kind of a crapshoot now this technique is not recommended if you use cables professionally and you're at a gig I wouldn't recommend doing this unless it's an emergency but if it's just used around the house or something like that this is perfectly fine and you probably will lose some length on your cable so just be aware of that generally we just buy the 20 25 foot cable so if there's plenty to chop out here you can always connect these together to make them longer and a stress point is usually right around this area let's go ahead and take this end off first we're going to need a screwdriver you can see there's a screw right there this out. I'm just getting a quick look at the connections and they look fine and that doesn't surprise me because usually the break is in the wire and it's usually up close here but just to be sure I start chopping back in here if we have to go to that extreme. This end looks okay that was the trouble area. He said he used to be able to put this around something and it would intermediately work but just for giggles let's take the other side off and be sure that there's not something going on in here before we start chopping out wire so I'm just looking for stray wires that could be touching one another everything looks good let's go ahead and connect these on the multimeter and see if it is faulty. I'm just going to use my helping hands here. Now we can test them easier. Let's get our multimeter out here. I'll put a link in the description to this one. It's pretty good. It's not too expensive. But any multimeter will work. You want to set it on continuity and you want to make sure if it has like an alarm function, you have it set so that we get a beep when these two are connected. Now, if you look down in this barrel, hopefully you can see that these are numbered. Here's one, three's our middle one, here's one, and here's two we want to write that down and I just made a quick diagram in the wire color here so let's begin by testing this cable just for giggles let's shove this in the ground in the center position and then we'll just start checking so you can see there's a short already I've got this in the middle position here this works but this also is connected to this pin. Let's move it over to this pin, the red pin. That's not even connected. And then our white. And our white and our ground are connected. So this is a faulty cable for sure. So what you can do is blindly start taking some length out of this thing and testing it before you put the end on. So here's our wire. We know it's somewhere along this length. I'm going to start by taking a fairly good chunk out of it. I already inspected the wire and I didn't see anything that looked suspicious. I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here. 
And I'm going to go ahead and start stripping this back here. You have an outer shield, and then you have this ground wire, which you have to unravel from the rest of the two wires, and then twist it together. Just take your time and get it all untrapped. You don't want any wispy wires, and then you can go ahead and twist this together nice and tight. And we're going to go ahead and separate these two, the red and the white and we're going to strip those back. You can use a razor blade for this if you don't have a tool like this just be careful that you don't cut into the wire too deep. Okay, got my ends off. Now we can test with our multimeter. Start with our center one which we know is a copper. Okay, that appears to be working. Let's check our other two pins. I'm still not getting a good connection. So that means that my problem is far, farther up on this wire. So I'm going to take another chunk out of it. That just shows you how junky they make this. If you buy these on Amazon and you're only spending $10 on them, expect this. I mean, light gauge wire, it's going to break. Especially if you squeeze it or you use it as a mic cable, it's going to break eventually on you because it just can't handle the movement. Now, if you're using this on like a a speaker cabinet or you're using it as a microphone that's permanently in place and it's not moved like on a stand this cheaper wire will be probably fine because you're not flexing it too much but when you start using these for things that move like microphones handheld microphones expect the worst that's when you should invest more money and a better cable for sure. I'm just going to tin these ends so that they're not frayed on me. You can do this before or after checking. It makes sense to do it before, but I like mine tinned. This is what you like. Okay. Let's find the other end of this and do our test again. Still hooked up for continuity. Get my clip on there. I'll put it in the center position. Check our this one. Okay, that's good. There's our red one. And white one. So that checks out. There's no shorts. And it looks like we got the bad piece out of the wire. So Let's continue connecting those. So the first thing we want to do is get our connection that we cut off here. And we're going to disassemble it. We have to open up this clamp here. And she's a screwdriver. Be careful we don't bend this up too much. And then I'll put it on something like this helping hand and just unsolder it wire for wire. And it might help too to put a little solder on it. I know it sounds kind of 
counterintuitive, but if you add fresh solder, a lot of times it's easier to desolder. And we're going to be putting fresh solder on anyway, so why not? Okay, let's remember that the red one is on this far side to me. Then I don't have to look at my diagram. So the red one is there. Add fresh solder to all these. Just a little to hold it in place. Not too much now, you don't want to break your wire again. Make sure that your cover is slid on because you won't be able to get it on once you solder these wires. Just want to make sure that that's taken up the strain relief for you. And then start connecting the wires back the way they were. Just take your time and do them one at a time do a good job if it doesn't look right it's probably not going to work right just make sure it looks right and you don't want to heat these up super hot because you might melt this plastic and then then you'll have another problem a little trim off that. I don't need it quite that long. Okay. Get it in position. Clean our tip here. Okay, there's our red connection. And let's turn it over here and do our white. Poke at it a little bit and get it to fall in where we want it. Right in there. And then fill it up. Make sure you get a good solder joint. You don't want a cold solder joint. You can tell the cold solder joints because they look like they're not fully uh, melted and they got bubbles and stuff in them. Okay, that looks pretty good. Dare we put the cover on before we check it? Yeah, sure, why not? So the trick to these covers is line up your screw holes. There's one. There's the other. Make sure we get our clamp on, okay? And slide this on until you see your hole through here. And drive the screw in. This time we can use our female and and jam our probe down in it. Find the other end here. Let's test this. Oh, we gotta turn our meter on here. There we go. There we go. Okay, 
Okay. Now let's try position two. I'm just looking at the numbers on here. There's two. Make sure that no other are connected. And then I'm going to put it in one. And one. There it is. All better. So yeah, we lost some cable. It's probably half as long as it was. But it'll get us through. And that's the important thing. So I hope you found this useful. Again, I wouldn't do this unless you were just using this cable at home, you know, just for fun, or you're in a jam. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you found this useful. Ring the bell notification. Leave a comment below. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.